Okay, I think we're ready to start. I'm Rose Bard. You've probably all heard from me on, over the phone in the last week. <laughs> and I'm just I'm going to introduce our presenter, Lisa Fishman. She's the nutrition educational professional at the University of Maine Cooperative Extension. And if you ever need to get a hold of her, she's around the corner. <laughs> um, she's the statewide coordinator for the Maine Extension Homemaker Volunteers. She has a Master of Arts in Liberal Studies from the University of Maine and a BA from the University of Maine at Fort Kent. Her program areas include volunteer management, community nutrition education, and food safety, including food preservation. She's a member of the National Extension Association of Family and Consumer Substances. And I don't know where she finds the time to do all of that. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are all out of the house. <laughs> well, welcome everyone, and thank you, Rose. And um, I'm glad to be here tonight, and I was really happy to be tapped on the shoulder by Dave Robbins and uh, Dawn to ask if I would offer a class, and I'm thrilled to be able to offer a class. Um, and even better that it's in my own building, and my office is right through that wall, and I, I'm all set up, and I have my stuff where I want it, and I'm happy and cozy. Um, before we get going, I do want to let you know where the restrooms are. And at any time while I'm talking, just get up and go take care of yourself. That's not going to offend me at all. Uh, if you came in through the front doors, you're going to go out toward that direction, but go all the way to the end of the hall, past the comfy couch. Um, down through those double doors and take a right down another hallway. It's basically in that corner of the building, that far corner of the <coughs> building, uh, men's rooms and women's rooms down there. Um, there is no water in the building, so I'm sorry that there's no machines or anything, so I hope you brought something to keep yourself hydrated. Um, and I do want to let you know that the University of Maine is prohibited from discrimination on any basis whatsoever, and if you feel like any of our programming that we offer in the community is not accessible to you, uh, there is a avenue for you to file a complaint, and that information is right here on the Injustice for All poster, and I'm required by law to say that, so I've gotten that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but I always forget to say it, so I just want to make sure I take care of that business. Um, so we are going to be talking tonight about electric pressure cookers, and they are a different animal from a pressure pressure cooker that many of us have grown up using, or our grandparents, or our parents use them, and we're familiar with that type of a pressure cooker. So this is a new breed of pressure cooker. They're pretty sometimes, and sometimes they're more industrial looking. Um, but um, these are mine. This one is my own that I just purchased recently. And the other two uh, I purchased for work. And the reason why this one, this was my first one, and I got this one because it was a Black Friday sale. I'm not, I'm not, not ashamed of that. I got it for a steal, and I didn't care what it looked like. But other people have said to me, it's so pretty. How could it be anything but fun? It's not intimidating because it's pretty. So I like that. So I'm going to go with it. It's pretty. It's not intimidating. Uh, and then I got this second one because when I'm doing classes, um, while one is, is working, I'm using the other as a demo. Um, so tonight I have three in front of you to show you because in between the times that I purchased these and when I purchased this one just this winter, um, the manufacturer has done a design change. And this is probably, if you're in the market to buy a newer model, this is the one you're going to come across, this design here. This is just Instant Pot. Okay, disclaimer, I'm not supposed to favor any products or anything, but like I said, I'm cheap. It was Black Friday, it was a good sale. I'm loyal to sales. So as I'm not married to Instant Pot, it's just I keep getting the deals. And they're brilliant at their marketing. They have done a bang up job of getting their message out, making their brand known, and really advertising it. And it shows, that's what people, it's sort of like when we used to make photocopies, we all called it Xeroxing. Same thing, we talk about electric pressure cookers now, it could be Sunbeam, it could be any brand, it's an instant pot in people's minds. That's what they're going with. So, if I sound like I'm biased, I'm not, but these are the ones I'm owning. So, but there's, there's like 20 or 30 brands out there. There are so many different types of electric pressure cookers that you can get, and uh, we'll talk about it in a bit. They all have different features. We'll go over some of them here. Find the one that has the features you're going to use, not just a standard because this is what you were told about, but find out what's the one I'm going to use, what's the size I'm going to use, and say push, push to push, posh, whatever, to whatever I have to say tonight as far as branding. Make up your own mind. 
So how many of you have used an electric pressure cooker before? Couple, couple. How many of you um, are afraid of it? Haven't figured out how it quite works yet. I, I was into, you know, I, yeah. I hesitated. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I used it last week though and I was really satisfied. You were happy with it, yeah, okay. It took me about three months of hating this thing. <laughs> like, how? what are people raving about this for? It is the stupidest contraption out there. I like my pressure cooker, it just does fine. I'm used to it. This is ridiculous. Like, I was burning on rice pudding. Who burns on rice pudding? <laughs> I was burning rice pudding. I couldn't figure out. Part of the problem, although I said this particular brand has done a great job of marketing themselves, their user information is terrible. When you open your package up and you take this baby out of the box, you get um, a safety manufacturer's warranty gizmo. You get a chart, which photocopies terribly, my apologies, um, on cooking certain vegetables and more commonly cooked foods. Um, and then you get this little booklet here, which um, tells you how to take it apart and put it together and precious little else. So you're really left to your own devices to figure it out. They give you a couple breadcrumbs for clues, but you really have to talk to people. And that was what cracked the code for me, was talking to people. So what do you do? How do you figure it out? Going online and finding some decent sites, not, you know, Becky Homecky sitting in the background <laughs> putting out a blog, but someone who's done a lot of research and someone who can actually speak with some authority about safety precautions and quality of food and food safety and those types of things. And they are out there. There's quite a few of them. And then I started to form a little relationship. We got to know each other because I started to figure out what was making it tick and how to make it work for me. And so um, I'm not going to be cooking anything for you tonight, but I will be serving you something. And you received two recipes. Mm -hmm. And it's after dinner, so that's kind of dessert -y time. Mm -hmm. So you can probably, through a process of elimination, figure out which of these two recipes you're going to be served this afternoon or this <laughs> evening. So it's not difficult. I promise you it's not difficult. <laughs> So that being said, and knowing that some of you are a little bit familiar with them, I'm going to go over, this is called getting to know your electric pressure cooker. So I'm going to go over some of the nuts and bolts and the do's and don'ts and some of the features that this device can offer you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch down to over here. And can everybody hear me okay? Mm -hmm. And the lighting is okay? Everything's flowing okay for you? Okay, good. So, um, so we have this pot, you have this display panel, and you're thinking, um, what am I supposed to do with it? It looks like R2-D2 or something from Star Wars. So you're going to um, twist open and take the cover off, and we're going to talk about the cover as one unit in just a minute. You're going to notice inside, you've got a pot. And oftentimes, if you purchase this, you'll get a little trivet on the inside. This is kind of it's very fancy. Um, that'll often be in here, but you have your stainless steel, or it might be um, a different material, but it's going to be like a Teflon nonstick material. And then you're left with your base, okay, the base pot. Now, this is a six quart model, and the six quart model of this particular brand has a cord that's detachable. So my cord is still tucked in here. So it has a detachable cord on the smaller model. Larger models, it's not detachable. You have to, it stays permanently in. For me, who's a little bit on the klutzy side, when I go visiting people with my potluck, it's going to be me who gets the cord stuck in the door, <laughs> in the car door, wherever I go, it's going to be me. So I can pop this out, stick it in you know, my pocket you know, or a tote bag and not get it jammed in the door or the car door or whatever. It, it just always happens. It's Murphy's Law. Um, so they're all going to have a cord of some kind, and it, it plugs in in the back here on the six quart. So let's talk about the lid. So the lids, and we can pass one around over here, and we can pass one around over here. And I'll talk about this one. This one's a little different, but they're almost almost the same. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look inside. And inside the lid, we're going to notice around here we have a silicone ring. 
Now, if you've got one of these and you've never ripped it apart, this is your chance to shine. Oh, and this is brand new, so like it's stiff. Once you pull it out the first time, it works fine. So you're going to pull your silicone ring out. Okay, that's again to make sure that the pressure stays inside the pot when you're using it. You don't want any air to escape except a little bit through the vent tube. So that's very similar to a regular pressure cooker, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very similar. So the silicone ring is great. It pulls out. It can be washed in the dishwasher. It can go in your um, regular wash. Oh, thank you, Carol. Okay, so that's the inside. That is held in place by this little rail um, that is intended to hold that in place during the pressuring process. Okay, so that's just the, um, the uh, silicone ring rail that you've got in there. Then you've got two other things. And I, this is going to be hard. I should have oh, no, it popped right off. So this right here it looks like the top of a salt shaker when you pop it off. This is the protector for your vent tube. So your pressure, your steam, is going to be coming out of this vent tube down here. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure when you're cooking in this that you don't get little pieces and bits of food, little spices, little seeds and things, clogging up the works here because then it won't work properly. You'll overpressurize and think it'll shut itself off. That's the beauty of the electric pressure cooker. If things start going awry, it turns itself off. Not like the one on the stovetop where she just, there she blows. So, so that's one of the beautiful things of the electric pressure cooker. But you still don't want to have it clog up because when you come back in a few minutes to say, check on your food and it's shut down, you don't know why, you don't know how long it's been shut down. But this pops right off. And again, this is dishwasher safe, but I wouldn't just because I don't want it to get popped around and get lost mm. in, or damaged in my dishwasher. But uh, this pops right off for cleaning. Okay. Yep. Automatically turn on. Yep. Yep. If something goes wrong, the sensors inside these will shut it off. Okay. If it starts to scorch on or burn on when you're cooking in it, it'll shut itself off, which is frustrating, but um, it's a safety feature. It's a very good thing. Okay. The other thing in here, you're going to notice this little silicone cap. Okay. On the flip side, now if you have the red one, there's a little button that's sunk down in, mm -hmm. and this one too, the little button is sunk down in the hardware housing here. This one, it's level. Okay, this particular model, this is a newer model, it's level. When these are at full pressure, this is going to pop up and come up well above the hardware here. And this one is going to pop up, and you can probably stick your finger in that and pop that right up. It's just going to come level with the hardware housing. That lets you know it's at full pressure. Okay? Now, just like you were using your stovetop pressure cooker, if you're at full pressure, you're not going to try to take that cover off, are you? No. no. If, this is, if the button is up and there's pressure in here, you won't be able to take this off. You'd have to really force it, and that would be really stupid. So don't do that. You don't want to force anything that's not going naturally. So don't force it. You'll be safe. Wait till the pressure drops, and the button will either drop down inside the hardware housing or go level, but it'll drop down. Okay. What's keeping that in place, if you flip it over, is this little silicone cap. If you hold your finger on that button and pull the little cap off, that'll drop right out, mm -hmm. and then you can clean it. Oh, okay, you little toothpick in there, okay. you can clean those little holes and vents oh. that make sure that you don't have any cloggage. That could be something just for foamy, starchy foods that might clog this up. It might not even be a little seed or an herb piece. It could just be applesauce. It could be starch from pasta that could clog that up. So that pops right out and that cleans. And that allows you to get all through here now and give it a good cleaning. This whole thing pops right in the dishwasher. Oh, wow. It's totally oh. safe to pop it right in the dishwasher. Yeah. It's getting better all the time, isn't it? <laughs> okay. To put it back together once everything's washed, you want to put your salt shaker back on, your, um, your protector here. You want to put your, um, oops, I'm upside down. You want to put your... Um, gauge back your gauge your uh, little vent tube in there and you want to cover it up with a little silicone cap once your ceiling ring is washed you can tuck that right back in behind the rail and you want to make sure that goes all the way down in if it doesn't your lid won't go on so that's another you know um, precautionary thing that happens is it just it won't turn itself uh, around it won't spin to actually click into place 
And this is really new. <laughs> it's really, really stiff. Is that directional? Like uh, the one we have, it's going to be there's a top and a bottom to the ring where uh -huh. it says this this side towards. Yep, this one doesn't matter. This side doesn't matter. Yep, this one doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that you use your fingers and you poke it down and around all the way. Or like I said, it won't, um, it won't allow you to twist it into place. It'll say, if you're struggling, if it's, if it's more difficult than it should be, you know something is wrong. Did you, did you practice taking it apart? No, I didn't. You can. <laughs> if you want to practice taking any of these apart, you certainly may. Okay. So that's the lid on the outside and that on the inside. And then on the outside, this is your sealing arm. That just pops right out. You just pull it right off. Okay, and then again, that allows you to get in here and wash really well, um, and you can run this right in your water. Again, it could go in the dishwasher, but I'd just be afraid that it would get tossed around and would get damaged inside. So just give it a good washing in your soapy dishwater, uh, and then when you're done, just pop it right back into place. So, so that cover can go in the dishwasher? The cover can go in the dishwasher. You do want to take it apart so all the places get cleaned, because um, we want to be sanitary when we're cooking. Um, but yeah, the lid itself, can go right in the dishwasher. Yeah. Okay, any questions about that? So um, if you have one of these and you haven't ripped it apart and put it back together, I encourage you to go home and rip it apart and put it back together. Um, that's what that entire booklet is about. That's all the manufacturer wants you to know how to do. <laughs> okay. The other part that we talked about in here, oops, let me get this on straight. Um, we talked about the liner pot, okay? And the liner pot is where all of the cooking is going to take place. You never, ever, ever want to get the inside of the base wet. You never want to cook in there. You will destroy your pot in three minutes flat, and you'll have to trash it to the dump. So your heating element is in here. The electrical part that makes the pressure cooker work is in here. This is where the cooking happens. And these um, are wonderful. They don't, they're just easy to clean. They're durable. Again, they go right in the dishwasher. Um, they're easy. What you're going to notice on here is that there's some markings. You can see the embossing on the outside here. You can see some markings on the outside here. See, this is why I have three. <laughs> not an addiction, really it's not. <laughs> I keep telling myself that. Um, you've got markings on the out here. And it says PC max two thirds. And then it says one half. So pressure cooker is PC. And that says two thirds full is the maximum amount of product you want to put in here. So all of those pictures you see in magazines where the pot is just overflowing with goodness, that yummy stew that comes right up to the top, that is staged, that is not safe. Never go more than two thirds. Your pot needs, you're gonna get very hot inside your pot. And there needs to be room in there for this food to move around. If you fill that up to the top, it's gonna come up against the lid, it's gonna clog things up, and it's gonna shut off going to say, no can do, do not pass go. You failed. So you never want to fill more than two-thirds full. If you're cooking something, thanks Carol, if you're cooking something that's starchy, that's going to give off a lot of foam, applesauce, if you're cooking uh, potatoes, if you're cooking pasta, bean, baked beans type of thing, those are going to expand and swell. You don't want to go more than half full in your pot. Okay? Because they're going to take up more space as they cook and they need more room to move around as well. So that's what the two markings are on here for. Uh, two thirds, if it's just regular cooking, just vegetables or soup or something, but anything that's going to expand in size uh, or get foamy. Rice is another one that expands. You don't want to cook more than a half full pot if you've got rice in here. Okay, does that make sense? So far so good? Anybody learned anything new so far? Do the recipes tell you? No. 
<laughs> no, you have to talk to people, <laughs> and you have to go online and find this out for yourself. Um, I believe um, Don said you had Neil Thompson spoke to you a couple weeks ago here. His wife, Kirsten, was wonderful um, because I was failing, and Neil came in to borrow something in my office, and I was maybe being very unladylike and swearing, possibly. <laughs> and he wanted to know what was up, and I was like cursing and screaming at this stupid pot, and he said, oh, I should send my wife over here. She uses ours all the time. Well, really? <laughs> because <laughs> I hate this thing right now. And she came in and she gave me the pointers. And that's what it took. It took her to be my breakthrough to say, aha, no one told me this. Aha, no one told me that. And she looked at some of the recipes I'd been trying and said, yeah, these are going to fail right from the get-go because the times are too much, the liquid is not enough. You know, I was like, okay. So she had a different eye for what worked and what didn't. So talk to people, form a support group. That's what I would <laughs> And you notice these are interchangeable. Like I'm not paying attention to what pot goes back into what base. So if you have more than one, the same size, they're totally interchangeable. Okay. Okay. All right, and that brings us to the base itself. So the base itself is very heavy. Which is uh, so that it doesn't tip over, so it's got heaviness in here. Um, it's got a weight in here, like a springy thing, so that when the pot has contents in it, it's going to come down and that's going to send a signal to the electronic panel here that you've got something in there to be cooked. Okay? So if, the, if you put the pot in there, it'll go down a little, but once you put product in there, it weights it right down. And that says, okay, it's okay to put the electronics on, we've got a reason to cook. Then there's the R2-D2 panel here. And people get like, oh my gosh, there's so many buttons. What am I supposed to do? Put it back in the box and don't worry about it. That's what they do. <laughs> so we're going to talk about what some of those buttons are. And the best way to do that is if I simply turn my clock on. So this one's closer. Turn it on. Okay, so you have an LED display that's going to come on, and when you turn it on, it's going to tell you that it's off. Electricity is running to it, that's why the lights are on, but you haven't given it a command yet, so it's off. It's not doing anything but just sitting there ready for you to tell it what to do next. Okay, so I'm going to put my pot in here, and I'm going to put my lid on. I can hit the command and it'll look right. So out of all of the display buttons that are on here, we have rice, we have multigrain, we have porridge and steam, we have soup, meats or stews, beans or chili, and poultry. Right now, ignore all of those. Okay, those are preset functions where if you were just using a standardized piece of chicken that Mrs. Jones down the street is using, that Mrs. Smith across the way is using, if you're using very standardized cuts of meat and, and processes, these little functions work great. They take all of the um, thought and input out of cooking. It's like a microwave frozen meal type of thing. These are just preset buttons. If you want more control over what you're going to cook, then the button you want to pay attention to, and on different pots it's different, but it's either going to be manual or pressure cook. They're interchangeable, depending on what brand you have, what the button panel says, either pressure cook or manual. And that says, I'm pressing the button and I'm putting in the exact time I want to put in. I'm not just using the, the porridge feature because I want to make oatmeal. I want it to cook at a very specific time that I think is right for me. I don't want the standard recipe. I want it to be a little bit chewier or I like mine a little runnier type of thing. So you're going to use pressure cook. And you're going to notice some other lights here in the middle. And it's kind of hard because you're not here. Um, but you're going to notice some lights here in the middle. It says low pressure and high pressure is the first button. Everything that you cook in here will default to high pressure except for rice. 
if you choose the rice button, if you are gonna choose the rice button, it'll default to low pressure because it's a slower cook. It doesn't need a high pressure cook. But everything will default to high. So if you went to the library and you took out a book on using your electric pressure cooker and you followed a recipe or you went online and you followed a recipe and it said cook at high pressure, you don't even need to worry about it. It's going to go to high pressure anyway. You don't have to select that. Okay, so that's just a little bit of redundancy. You don't need to worry about that. Underneath it, this model says less normal more. Gee, what do you think less normal more means? <laughs> Could it be low, medium, high? Why, yes, yeah. yes, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Why we have to rename things, I don't know. But less normal more is low, medium, high. So if you're looking, um, if one of your recipes that you're following wants you to select a lower temperature or a higher temperature, that's what you'll use here. That's going to come into play very much so when you use a different button called the saute feature. And we're going to hit saute in just a minute. But the pressure cook button is going to allow you to cook foods for the time that you want, okay, depending on what it is you're cooking, what recipe you're following. Um, and you're going to notice over here too a plus and a minus sign. That's for you to be able to toggle in the amount of time that you want to put in. Now, the last time I used my pressure cooker here, and it'll remember the time that I used the last time I used it. So if I turn this on to pressure cook, whatever I cooked, which was dessert tonight, cooked for 26 minutes. So if I don't want 26 minutes, I can use my press button, button and I can go up in minutes. Or I can use my minus button and I can go down in minutes. Okay? So I can toggle up or down to whatever I want. If I said, oops, I, I made a mistake, I'm just going to hit cancel and it's going to wipe out everything that I did. Okay? I'm really sorry you all can't see this closer. Like we have to be all gathered around like in kindergarten. Um, so those, that's, those are the two most important buttons that you'll need to know for now are pressure cook and cancel. Okay. Um, the other most important button that you're going to want is saute. Now, the electric pressure cooker, when you use your pressure cooker at home or you use your slow cooker at home and you're making a beef stew, mm -hmm. it's pretty much going to tell you to dredge your beef in a flour and mixture, seasoning mixture, brown on the stove top and then transfer to the slow cooker or your pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. This will do the saute for you. So if you take the cover off and you hit saute, this is where you can either do the less mo normal or more for a low, medium, or high, just like your stove top. So this is on more. And I want to cook for 10 minutes, okay? I'm going to saute some onions. So I'm going to wait till this gets hot and if I put my food in now, well, first of all, I'm going to give it a command, and if I do nothing for 10 seconds, it'll turn on and take the command that I told it. So after 10 seconds, it'll beep to tell me it's doing it. Now, it says that it's on, so it took my command. It's going to heat to high, and we're going to be able to saute our onions. Yeah? Is 10 minutes standard time for sauteing? When it, no, whatever, whatever you wanted to toggle in for time, whatever. Um, I just chose 10 just to play with the buttons and show you that it goes up and down. Do you, do you have to put the cover back on? Nope, 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 just like you would be doing on your stove top. Mm -hmm. Pretend at this point that this is a, a frying pan on the top of your stove. So if I were to put, if you were to put a cold frying pan on top of your stove and turn it on, would you put your oil and your onions in at that time or would you wait until your pan was hot? Wait till I get oh, it hot. What would you do? You wait till it's hot. <laughs> what would you do? You wait till it's hot because it's gonna. You're gonna put your oil in. It's gonna ripple across the top, so you know it's hot. And you're gonna put your food in. It's gonna go. Tss, yeah. And you're gonna start sautéing. Same thing here. You don't want to put your food into a cold pan. You want it to heat up. It's got. It's turning on now. It's going to high. And I can feel the heat coming out of here now. When it's hot, it's going to say hot. Wow. And then I know it's time that it's gotten to the temperature that's good for sauteing whatever it is, whether it's onions, peppers, ground beef, whatever I need to saute. Is it just an instant pot that does that? No. Nope. Does, does a, a regular pressure cooker? Not a regular pressure cooker. Well, you could. 
if you wanted to do yeah. your regular pressure cooker. But then you, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could use it as that, but then you've got to scrape it all out and clean it all out because you'll end up with burnt bits on the bottom that will yeah. scorch, oh. scorch to the bottom, yeah. so you don't want it to burn. Same thing here, but you can deglaze it with a little bit of liquid and then keep going with your recipe. Now you put in for 10 minutes now, 10 minutes, does that include the heating time? Or the 10 minutes um, is just going to tell me that I'm going to, it's going to stay on saute for 10 minutes while I do this. It's going to, at 10 minutes, it's going to turn off. Even though I'm still standing here sauteing, it's going to turn off because I told it to turn off right, at 10. But, but if I want to keep sauteing, I just give it more time. More time. But let's say it takes a couple minutes to heat up. Yeah, it, it, won't, um, it won't start the timer until it says hot. Oh, okay. There. There yeah, go. the timer there won't go. go. So yeah. I've got some good heat coming out of here now. <laughs> and you've got to keep stirring. Just like you would on the stove top. You yeah. would saute your onions or whatever you were putting into a soup or whatever you were doing. Okay? So that's still heating up. So, um, if you were wanting to saute, so it says that we're sauteing more, normal or less. Right now it's on more. If I want to go down to low, I would press saute again, and you saw the light jumped. Mm -hmm. If I press saute again, that takes it up to medium. Every time I press saute, it's going to cycle through the low, medium, high, or the less normal more. So I just keep pressing saute until I get to where I want. So if I'm sauteing and it's getting too hot and my onions are browning up a little bit too fast, I can knock that heat right down to low or less, just like you would on your stovetop. Mm -hmm. So that, that's one feature there. Um, turn that off because I'm really not sauteing onions tonight. <laughs> so now it does say oh, hot. Yeah. So now it is achieved and if you came up and you felt this you would feel the heat coming out of here just like you would if you ran your hand over a, a pan on your stove. All right so we're going to cancel that. I'm going to stop that. Um, the other thing that the base is good for here is that um, and this is only on the electron I think it's only this manufacturer, that um, once you've opened up your pot, you're, you're done, you've cooked, and you've um, released all the pressure in your pot, and you want to check to see if everything is right in there, you <coughs> take it off and you've got this lid full of steam, you can just slide this right into the handle, and that's a little holder. So the cover has these little wings, okay. and the lid has, the, the base has these little slots oh, yeah. inside each of the handle pieces. So they're a little, I think that was fa fairly genius, and whoever came up with that should be a mega millionaire, because all cookware should have that. <laughs> Quite honestly, I like Lisa, that So how long does it, oh, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. How long does it take to cool down to get uh, the... De pressure down. Depends on how much is in there and how hot it is. So um, it could take anywhere from five minutes to 30 minutes, depending on how full that pot is of and how dense that is. That's and there's there. no no way you can expedite the yeah. Yeah. there is. Oh yeah, there's ways that you can knock that pressure out. We're going to cover that okay. um, very shortly here. I should actually go get some water from the bathroom and I can show you how that works. I'll do that in a minute. How's that sound? Um, so that's the base here. And any questions so far? Lisa, when yeah. you said it was hot, mm -hmm. you reached down a little bit. Yeah. Is the side of that pan hot also? Yeah. So yeah. if you're elf, this could, right. you could burn yourself. You could. Um, okay. Not terribly hot. It doesn't. It, it doesn't is. conduct as much heat as the bottom because yeah. that's where the heating okay. element is. Um, I have picked these up out of here. I wouldn't touch the inside. I wouldn't touch down the side. But the very, very lip I have picked up before. Maybe it wasn't the smartest thing I ever did. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it is hot. We all do silly things sometimes <laughs> in the privacy of our own kitchen and stuff. <laughs> grab, you know, grab the apron and take them up and so. Yeah. <laughs> You're always in hurry, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're always cutting corners because it would take three seconds to get a bottle. But no. No, no, no. Let me take my shirt sleeve. That's better. Um, okay. So other things that we can do in here um, or things that we need to know about when we're in here. Number one, if we're cooking in our electric pressure cooker, we never want to cook with anything less than one cup of liquid. Okay? 
That's a minimum one cup of water. And when the cooking liquid can't be something that's going to be, um, that isn't clear. So we can use stock, we can use a wine, we can use water, we can use beer. You can pretty much see through those things. They're very liquidy, they're not viscous at all. What we don't want to count as our one cup of liquid are juices that are very sugary because sugar is going to burn on very quickly. It's just waiting for an excuse. We don't want to use tomato juice products or tomato sauce or puree. Again, it's thick and it's got a lot of sugar and that will burn on. So if we have like a tomato sauce we're making, we always want to make sure that we've got plenty of water in there or wine or another very viscous liquid that we can put in here to offset the thickness of those types of products. So minimum one cup, never go less than a cup no matter what you're making. Again, the whole premise of a pressure cooker is to build a head of steam to help the food cook. If we don't have steamable liquid in there, we don't build the head of steam, we don't cook. So it's important to have the liquid in there in a minimum quantity of one cup. Not for sauteing, but for the, the cooking when the lid is on. Yeah, Karen? If I can't put my tomato juice in there because it'll stick to the bottom. You can put the tomato juice, you just have to make sure you have m uh, at least another cup of liquid in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it can't be the only uh, liquid. I was wondering how I was going to make my uh, stuffed cabbage. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Just make sure you've got another cup of liquid in there with it all because that's going to make that head of steam and it's not going to burn on. If we have too many sugary things in here, too many starchy things, and not enough of that viscous liquid, it's going to burn on. Once it starts scorching, even a little bit, this is going to shut off, and the nasty message coming across here says burn. <laughs> and it keeps flashing. <laughs> so you know, something has gone terribly awry. <laughs> that was the day that um, Neil Thompson's wife came in and found me, or the Neil came in and found me, I was like, the burn notice again, what am I doing wrong? What is going on here? And it was, you know, rice pudding. Like, really? I, like, I tried like four recipes of rice pudding because I really wanted to make rice pudding for one of my classes and it just wouldn't do it. So I've given up on rice pudding. How's that? I failed and I moved on. <laughs> I moved on to cheesecake. Which do you think is better? <laughs> I know which one I'm looking for. So um, we always want to make sure that we've got one cup of liquid in here when we're starting to cook. And we can put um, any number of things in here. From a food safety perspective, I would never, ever, 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 ever tell anyone or um, condone the practice of putting frozen chicken in a crock pot. If you do it, don't tell me. I would never condone the practice of putting frozen chicken in a pressure cooker on your stovetop and, and just making a dish with that. In the electric pressure cooker, you can put frozen chicken breasts right in here. I mean, just take four frozen rock solid chicken breasts out of the freezer, toss them in there, put your cup of liquid put, or any broth that you want in there, uh, seasonings and whatnot, turn it on and cook and you're going to end up with safe chicken. You can always turn this back on for another minute. Um, if it's not safe, if you pull this out of here and you uh, take the temperature or you cut into it and they're still pink, you can put the cover right back on, set it up for one more minute. It'll come up to pressure very quickly and it'll cook for one minute and then let you know that it's all done. Um, a lot easier than if you're using you know, if you're using a stovetop pressure cooker and you've got a roast in there and you open it up after you depressurize it, you open it up and you cut it open and it's still bloody, you're like, darn, I need to start. It's going to take a lot longer to get that back up to pressure because you just subjected that whole thing to cold water to get the pressure down and now you've got to heat that all back up and build the heat and the pressure back up. This one, you take it out, the pot and everything in there still stays hot while you check, you don't lose your temperature. So when you put the cover back on to cook it for an additional minute, it comes right back up to pressure very quickly. So that's another good thing here. Um, so we certainly get behind, from a food safety perspective, cooking frozen foods in here. Um, you, the good rule of thumb for, like if you were to cook frozen chicken breasts, like you get home at six o'clock and you forgot to thaw something out for dinner, but you've got some frozen boneless skinless chicken breasts in the freezer, um, it's about a minute per pound that you wanna cook them for. So if you've got a 
14 ounce chicken breast, then you would do 14 minutes in the in the pressure cooker, and uh, excuse me, minute per ounce, not minute per pound. Sorry about that. Yeah, minute per ounce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> minute per ounce. Um, so that that's how long it would cook. So you would want to weigh about how much your chicken breast was, and then set your time accordingly in here. And you can use again. We're talking about viscous liquids, so chicken broth or beef broth, bouillon and water, anything in there, that's going to all be fine because it's very fluid. It doesn't have a lot of sugars and it's very viscous um, and flows and that'll build, build a nice head of steam inside here. So you can infuse the flavor by cooking in stock. So that works very well. That's frozen food way more than if it was thawed? Yep, a little bit. Okay. A little bit because the, the, if the food expands and it's just going to be a little bit heavier. And when it thaws out, it loses a lot of that liquid that it's holding on to. So it's not going to be a huge amount, but it is going to be a little bit different. Now, when I do a pot roast in that slow cooker, mm -hmm. you know, I cook my meat and then I watch the time. I say, okay, now it's time to put my carrots in. And then I watch the time. Now it's time to put my potatoes in. Can you throw that all in at the same time for that? Not necessarily. You're going to want to look up some recipes because, again, depending on the size of meat that you put in there, mm -hmm. uh, like if you were to do a beef stew, yeah, you can do that all together because mm -hmm. the carrots are going to cook, actually, the meat's going to cook faster than the carrots mm -hmm. um, and the potatoes and all of that. So you can put those all together, but with a bigger size, you probably want to stop at one point, depressurize, open the cover and put the rest of your stuff in and go from there. Okay. That would, that would be what I would recommend. You can make, I mean, depending on the recipes you choose, um, I've made the mashed potatoes and meatloaf together in oh. the same pot. And those work well. And they come out with these little dividers. Oh, wow. Like if you had, like, I, all my cheesecake pans are dirty, but <laughs> those are the pans. This one is, this is awful because it has holes in the bottom. But if you were pretending this was solid, you would just put this little divider in here. And you could put your potatoes in one, you could put your meat in one, and you could put your um, carrots in another. And cook those all at the same time. And have full course meal come out all at once. Wow. That, that's not a casserole type thing, just separately cooked. Um, but yeah, that's kind of cool that you can separate your things out. But the, the meatloaf and mashed potatoes was really neat. That came out very nicely. Um, any other questions so far? Can you put a whole chicken in there? Yeah, yeah. you can put a whole chicken in there. Obviously, with something this size, you're looking at a Cornish game hen. Um, you're not going to go real big, but they do make an 8-quart and they make a 12-quart. Um, so if you were, I mean... I, I joke, I'm not addicted to my instant pots, but there are some people that have like seven or eight. Oh, and they oh, have like oh. baby ones and they have great big ones. And wow. there's so many blogs out there and there are so many websites and Facebook groups and everything that you can join all on electric pressure cooking. People go gaga, la la over these wow. things and they're constantly posting where the next sale is. Ooh, Target has liners on sale for four ninety nine. <laughs> run, people, run. <laughs> go ahead. Um. When you're cooking your meat, whatever, do you sip it low, normal, or high? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's less normal, more, which is low, medium, high. And that's for sauteing. That's when you're using this as a frying pan, mm -hmm. as a sauteer. Because it would that's go the only just. Time you have to set the temperature. Yep, that's the only time you need to worry about that. Because other than if you're pressure cooking, everything is, pro everything is cooking on high pressure. Yeah. So that's going to wipe out any other setting that you've got going on when you sauteed. Time, override that. time is what makes the difference. The time is what makes the difference. Yeah. Now if I were using my pressure cooker at home, I would not leave the kitchen while that pressure cooker was in use. Whether I'm watching the dial or whether I'm listening to the jiggler, <laughs> I need to be there because yeah. that's going to change. Mm -hmm. This, you set it, you put the time on, and you walk away. And when the food is done, it'll go beep, <laughs> Ten times. And you know, oh, my food's done. And when your food is done, it'll start counting <coughs> up. So you set your timer, and when it gets to heat, it starts <laughs> counting down to let you know how much time has gone by um, and how much is left to go out of your time that you set. When you're finished cooking, it goes to L. The display will say L for lapsed time. And it'll start counting up. So you can say, oh, it's been 15 minutes since that was finished cooking. 
where was I? I was out hanging clothes on the line, or I was out yapping on the phone, or I was out playing the solitaire. Um, I was out doing any number of things, and I didn't listen to my pot, and now 15, 18, 20 minutes has gone by. I need to open that up and get in there and do what I need to do. So it lets you know how much time has gone by. <coughs> now, Carol, you asked if there was a way to get rid of the pressure. So there's two ways. Once you build pressure, um, that's the easy part. But then how do you get the pressure out? And there's two ways. And if you look at any recipes for pressure cooking, you're going to see a couple codes. And there's a glossary of terms that I, I gave you in your little handouts. Um, because sometimes you get into the lingo and you don't know what they're talking about. And uh, QR and NR. So natural release is known as NR. And it's just as it sounds. When this is done cooking, you do nothing. And time passes, and the pressure goes down, and the heat goes down, and the little pin here drops to let you know the pressure just dropped out naturally. Enough time has gone by, 10, 15 minutes, we're good. If you have a recipe that you need to get into and get it out to stop cooking, like you have a roast in there and you don't want it to overcook, then you can quickly release the pressure by sending the sealing arm to quick release. And that'll knock the pressure out quickly. Now, I mentioned that there was a redesign of the lid. So, that is because... Oh, look, we're all stuck here. Here we go. It was hot in there, so it's stuck. <laughs> so, um, so the sealing arm here, and I mentioned when we were cleaning this, you could take your sealing arm and pop it right out. This doesn't move a whole lot. This goes up or down. The, the range is very short. Okay? Up here, and this is, if I were to, if I had the rules book and I were in charge, um, the, the poor part of engineering here is that you can barely see this is red and this is embossed on red and if you have any vision problems this is difficult to see really difficult yeah. to see yeah. so up here you can barely see it says sealing and down here it says venting you can see that it's not real yeah simple to see unless you're right on it with just the right light yeah. Yeah. so you see that yeah. <coughs> It's just really, it's poorly designed, and whoever the engineers are, you can just barely see ceiling. And that's yeah. why you got it on sale, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like that. <laughs> 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 so we didn't even know it's not a while when we had it right here. Yeah. Yep. And the black one is the same thing, and the turquoise one is the same thing. Yeah. So wow. it says ceiling up yeah, here, I and venting down that. here. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, see, we have venting yeah. and sealing. So, it's not easy to see. No. And oh, red yeah. is the worst color in the world for vision yeah. impairment. So, <laughs> anybody with a vision impairment, that's a hard thing. But again, it's not any better. It's not like they did it in white on this one. Sealing is at the top and venting is at the bottom. Oh, is it this switch? That's a different, that's oh. the different style. So what would happen if I were, so while this is working and I'm in the sealing position, I'm holding all my steam inside my, my pot while I'm cooking because the steam is what's doing my cooking for me and getting at that nice high temperature, which is why we can cook in a shorter amount of time. Would I want to get the steam to release quickly? It's going to come out of this vent tube, out of these three little slats mm -hmm. right on the top. I need to move this over to the venting position. So it's here at sealing. I need to slide this over to venting. It's not a big slide. But at the same time, I have to be careful because a lot of pressure of steam is coming out of these three tubes now. So a lot of people have gotten burned because they went over to the top mm -hmm. and got their hands burned. Okay, and yeah. that's, that's painful. So if yeah. you've ever had a steam burn, it's, it's really painful. So, um, and people were intimidated, just like they are with the pressure canners. 
and they don't want to put that gauge on. They don't want to put that gauge on because it's really intimidating. They don't want to release this pressure. So even though the recipe was saying quickly release the pressure so you have a really good product in there, they weren't releasing it. They were letting it naturally release, which was safe. They felt better about it, but it wasn't giving them a good quality food product at the end. It was overcooked. It was mushy. It was, you know, too done. So the manufacturer uh, redesigned the lid so that now the release valve is separated from the steam release valve over here. So I can uh, set this to the sealing position here. And when I need to release that steam, I just push it here. And that'll allow the steam to come out. And I'm removed. I don't have to go over the top anymore or mistakenly go over the top. I can release it over here to the side. So that was a redesign. And that's a little bit different from these I got about four four years ago and this one I just picked up this year. So when it when it buzzes and it tells you your food is ready, you should release the pressure. Only if your recipe tells you to. Oh okay. Yep. So if I'm cooking broccoli, so I have frozen broccoli in here. Frozen broccoli has a cook time of zero minutes. <laughs> zero minutes. And what that is, is I put in my one cup of water, I put in my broccoli, and I make sure I don't go over the two-thirds mark here. Broccoli doesn't, isn't going to expand. It's not going to give off uh, starch or anything. Hello. Your seal, maybe? Oh, you're right. I didn't get this all the way down in earlier. Thank you for pointing that out to me. It was too stiff and I didn't get it tucked all the way down in here. See, I told you you wouldn't be able to close the lid. While you're doing that, Lisa, just a question about the, the old school one with the steam that you can burn yourself with. Yep. Um, that, that's the kind I have. Mm -hmm. um, I, I usually kind of like just it is rec you can so that's I'm gonna mess with that and the it. other thing I do is I aim I, I move the pot yes. because it'll the steam goes right up into my cabinet yes. oh, yeah. so one thing you can do as Joanne just said and I don't have a long handled spoon with me but you can take a long handled spoon or if you're really if you're really <laughs> you know squeamish about it and you could just go from a distance and nudge that down Mm -hmm. yeah. and then the steam will come out and that's fine. What I would not want to have you do, and some people do, and the manufacturer strongly de-recommends it, is some people will throw a dish towel oh. over the whole thing and then release. So please don't do that. Yeah. That could be more problematic mm -hmm. than helpful. Really? Um, yeah, don't throw a dish towel over it because that clogs mm -hmm. the steam up. Is that what you do? <laughs> it clogs the steam up and doesn't well, allow for the full go, force. Uh, at least I use it to... To set it, sure. and then I'll pull the towel back and direct the steam. Yeah, recording. but they don't—they don't, they don't oh, yeah. want any any blockage of oh, the yeah. steam coming out. So yeah, better I, to go this way. Or as Joe also yeah. mentioned, you can go. Ch yeah. Ch okay. Yeah, okay. Ch just a little bit. Um, when the steam releases, if you've never used one of these, it comes out full throttle, yeah. like ch smokestack. Yeah, okay. It's very forceful and. I happen to have a kitchen that doesn't have an island. So I have to put mine on my countertop <laughs> under my cabinets. This will peel the varnish yeah, off right. your cabinets. Yeah. Oh, so wow. you want to make sure you pull this to the edge of your cabinet and angle it like Joe said so that you've got this out as much as you can because you don't want this going up underneath your cabinets and do damage. <laughs> Um, maybe not the first time, but if you do it repeatedly, you're going to yeah. do some damage because it's a forceful, it's like pressure washing almost with steam for the first, you know, five seconds or so where this comes out. It's pretty forceful, pretty forceful. So make sure you're in the clear and there's nothing up above you. So it was a surprise the first time I used it. Yes, it was. <laughs> Again, the booklet doesn't tell you these things. You have to find it out by trial and error or someone telling you. Oh, so that's what it does. That's almost criminal. Yeah, note to self, don't do that. Yeah. So, um, so I can't remember what I was going to do when I was going to put the cover on. Louis 16. So Lisa, what comes with the basic Instapot? You get all those items? No, no. Um, when I bought this one, 
I got, um, you get the trivet that mm -hmm. came with it. Okay. You're also going to get a um, condensation cup and this clips onto the back. There's a space on the back where this just sort of clips into place so that when you open up your pot and you've got a lot, it's still warm in there, it keeps wanting to stick to the cover. Um, and you've got a lot of moisture and condensation here and you put it here, it's all gonna drip down into this reservoir around the top, okay? And there's a little hole here in this reservoir right here so that that extra water that's building up here can drip out of the way and into this little condensation cup wow and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned what else came with this because this is an easy thing to forget and I have seen pictures of people who have never cleaned it and forgot it was back there and after use after use oh, after no. use just collecting all kinds of different drippings from different foods oh. and it was just a cesspool of mold wow. it was just fuzzy oh. and green and gross it's like oh this is time to throw that out people um, because they just forget it it's on the back of the pot yeah. and you just it just not something that you see in your face like the lid like there should be a thing that says oh, you can't take this off unless you take your condensation cup off but that is not the case so that does stick right on the back there thank you for bringing that up so this particular pot was the first one i got it's the oldest of the three and it came and, and instant pot i think was just starting to take off with a fury at that point and i got this and i got the condensation cup and it came with a glass lid so that when I choose to use the slow cooker feature, so this can be a slow cooker as well. If you're slow cooking, you want steam to escape a little bit. You don't want to have like a pressure buildup. So you wouldn't use this type of a lid that's going to keep all of the moisture and the pressure in there. You want to just use any pot lid that's going to rest on here. It's going to keep your heat in, but not so tight that a little bit of moisture and steam can't escape. So um, it came with a nice glass lid. Um, and that's all they came with. Um, my second Instant Pot only came with the rack and the condensation cup. And same with the newer one that I just bought, the rack and the condensation cup. Um, what I have bought subsequently, because it's all in the name of my job, so I'm supposed to buy these things, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> was I bought these fun little egg molds, these little silicone. So if I wanted to make the little egg bites, which are really cute and really healthy and really easy to make. Um, just like scrambled eggs, you can put your peppers, you can put your onions, mushrooms, whatever you want to put in there, uh, and you divvy them up into these little cups. You put them on your trivet so it's not down in the water, and you cook them, and it's like a steamed little egg bite, and they're wonderful, like little quiches, little souffle quiches. Um, and then you can just pop them out whenever you want them. Um, breakfast, lunch, snacks, they make a, a nice little treat. So of course I had to have the egg by mm. mold. And how long do, the, do those cook for? Um, different recipes. Um, I would, uh, hard boiled eggs cook for five minutes. So I would say this might be three or four minutes um, by the time, you know, they cook. cook. Mm. So another thing I do want to mention, I'll talk about the toys in a minute. I do want to mention um, Instant Pot is a brand and electric pressure cookers are the name of the device. They are not instant, okay? So when a recipe says, oh, I can cook chicken breasts in four minutes, whatever, if I had a four ounce chicken breast, I can cook it in four minutes. That doesn't take into account the time it takes for the pressure to build in the pot and the pressure to come out of the pot. That's just the actual cook time. So it does take time for pressure to build and it takes time for pressure to be released. So that also needs to be factored in. So if you want to eat in 30 minutes, don't think that because it only cooks for four, you can wait you know, until 20 minutes, 25 minutes past the hour to finally start cooking because you're going to be behind the eight ball. Um, so you have to factor that in as well. So even though it's instant, and I keep seeing that all the time, well, it says Instant Pot, there's nothing instant about it. It's just a gimmick. Come on, it's just a name. So, um, so other things that you can buy, um, this is a trivet if I wanted to make hard boiled eggs in here, I could sit my eggs in here mm -hmm. uh, and cook my hard boiled eggs, or I could just pile them up on my trivet. Uh, and that's fine in here too as well. 
stack them on here. If you're cooking something like a soup or a stew, you wouldn't need a trivet. That's going to go, your cook pot is going to be your pot. But if you have something that you're cooking that you don't want down in the water so much, you want the steam to be building around it, but you don't want it submerged, you can use your trivet. Um, the one that came with the new little pack of toys that I bought was this one. So I don't know why the handles are curved like that, but they are. Um, it came, I got two steam baskets and by the looks of, I've never used them, um, the little handles that came with them that I can pop into place so that I can use those. Um, but you can cook a couple of things. So if I wanted to cook um, potatoes and broccoli at the same time, they're nesting. So I can cook the two at the same time in here. It's up on legs so it's not down in the water. Um, oh, I mentioned that broccoli cooks at zero minutes. That's oh, yeah, where I was going with that. Yeah. So once my broccoli cooks at zero minutes, um, I'm going to put my water in. I'm going to put my broccoli in uh, to not go past the two-thirds mark. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to say time cook. And I'm going to take it all the way down to zero. And if I just hold it, it will go down faster. <coughs> Whoops. Oh, okay. Oops, oops, oops. There. Go to zero and let it start up. And by the time it gets to pressure, the broccoli is done. So I can turn it right off. I can release, I can release it and it's perfectly al dente. It's tender crisp. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, so that's how I like to cook my frozen vegetables now is because I don't have to, because I always overcook everything. Like everything cooks at 350 on high, and everything's overcooked and mush all the time. And that's how I roll. Everything gets cooked on high or 350. There is no happy medium. Um, so this makes sure that I don't have mush, mush, mush on my frozen vegetables. So, so all um, frozen vegetables at zero? Uh, most of them. Yeah. Most of them are going to be at zero or one minute. Mm -hmm. Zero or one. So like broccoli can get very tender and you know you don't want to no. overcook that. So all the brassicas would cook for like zero. Uh, and if it's not, I mean if you open it up and you say, ooh, it's like my Brussels sprouts are still a little bit crunchy here. I don't cold. quite like that. Do, what's that? They're cold. They're cold. <laughs> yeah, they, they could be. Just put the cover back on and set it again for zero or one. And again, by the time it comes up to pressure, it's already been heating and it's cooked enough, just getting to pressure that you don't have to cook it anymore than that. So that's, that was really fun. And spaghetti squash. I was going to make spaghetti squash tonight, and I could only find these little tiny, oh. they look like large grapefruits. Mm. They didn't even look like spaghetti squash. <clears throat> but I have made um, the whole squash that fit in there. The whole, just poke it with a fork and put the whole thing in there with a cup of water, and the whole thing steamed. Like, I followed the timetable on your vegetable cooking mm -hmm. chart, and it was perfect. Sliced that in half wow. and scraped it out, yeah. and I had perfect strands of spaghetti in my yeah, spaghetti squash. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. So, How long did it take? Uh, whatever oh, your chart says. Yeah. Uh, I followed butternut. I followed yeah. just the squash. Yeah. Things. Followed the winter squash. It was like, I probably put it on for six minutes, uh, and it was perfect. Nice. It was absolutely wow. perfect. So that was a, an eye opener, and I've served that at two of the classes I've taught, and people were like, "You could cook a spaghetti squash in <laughs> six minutes." I did, I did, I did that. I did that. Well, you eat it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think where else I want to go. Any other questions so far? What can um, you cook in there? Um. Things that wouldn't do well under pressure would be tender fish. I wouldn't cook any tender fish in here because it's going to go over. Um, you don't want to cook anything that has a very short cooking time on its own anyway. So if you have pasta that is less than eight minutes of cooking time, don't bother with this because it's going to overcook. Uh, regular pasta, if you're going to cook pasta in here, which you can, you can throw your tomatoes, put some water in, but you can put your meatballs, you can put your tomato sauce, you can put your pasta all at once mm -hmm. in there. But when you're putting your pasta in, do pick up sticks. Just sort of like, you know, break it into shorter pieces and then sprinkle like pick up sticks so yeah. that it's got spaces all around it as it cooks. That's going to help that stay um, separate instead of clumping all together when it's cooking. So um, adding a cup of water yeah. won't make it 
watery? Yeah. yeah. No, because it's going into the steam. steam. It's, your, it's making your steam. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's making steam. So, um, it, you know, that's, that works out just fine. Um, so anything, you know, again, if it takes a very short cooking time, uh, I wouldn't do fiddleheads in here because they're so fragile. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't cook fiddleheads yeah. in here. I wouldn't cook greens in here because I want to just saute them lightly. I don't necessarily want them really cooked. Uh, and again, they're so tender and fragile, I wouldn't necessarily want the high pressure um, cooking on them. Um, those are the types of things I would avoid. But I have made uh, poached pears in here, and that came out great. I've made yogurt. This one, um, this one has a yogurt setting. I'm not even sure if the other ones do. Um, yogurt is so easy to make. If you like yogurt, it's literally a gallon of milk and about two tablespoons of, I just went to the store and bought a plain non-fat yogurt and used two tablespoons of that, um, and that's where you go. And then it, it goes all night. Uh, I can't remember, there's two steps. There's one step that goes like overnight, and then you separate it out, and then you do another step. Um, and then you string it up and let all the whey come out, and it's like a lot of whey that comes out of it. But you end up with like a whole pot full of the most beautiful Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. um, it's wonderful. Perfect. So it's perfect. milk and yogurt? You it's it milk a couple tablespoons of a star. So now I've seen a lot of recipes that ask you to go out and get sweetened condensed milk mm -hmm. as a starter, um, and I didn't go that route. I went with just um, two tablespoons of a plain non-fat yogurt that had the active yogurt, uh, oh, active, okay. active cultures in it that you want to start with. Yeah. Wow. There's a couple of good websites that I would recommend to you. Um, one is, um, he's wonderful, his name is Jeffrey Eisner. And if you're, he's just funny, but his name is Pressure Luck Cooking. Like not press your luck, but pressure luck cooking. And his name is Jeffrey Eisner and he's got a lot of good information. Um, he was one of the first websites I checked out for like, what is this thing? And his like nine minute video told me everything and more I needed to know about using an electric pressure cooker. It's like, oh my God, can I can you? You're perfect, I need to take you wherever I go. Um, so he's one really good source and he's got a lot of recipes um, that he puts out almost daily. Another good one, um, they're the ones that have made the dessert that we're gonna make tonight. They're Jackie and Amy and they research and test every single recipe they put out. They don't put anything out unless they've done it a thousand times. You look at your recipe tonight for your dessert, it's called cheesecake number 17, because it was 17 tries until they got it right. Um, and they finally got the perfect cheesecake for the electric pressure cooker that they did. So that's why it's called cheesecake number so 17. Did, so this Jackie and Amy, do they have a website? Yes, they do. And I think at the oh, bottom of the here. recipe, um, I think it says well, the credit source, Jackie. Amy and Jackie, sorry, I got okay. the yeah. mm -hmm. um, They're on there. And then the last one that I go to frequently um, is 365 days of slow cooking and pressure cooking. And she has different recipes every day. Um, there's a lot of, lots and lots and lots of ones out there. Some are very gimmicky. Um, a lot of sites from my perspective of teaching health and nutrition, I, I always look for the ones that are using that rely a lot on processed and packaged foods to, to throw, and I try to avoid them. I want more whole ingredients. I want more um, scratchy cooking. Let the, let this do the cooking for you, but that doesn't mean that you need to buy you know seven cans of high sodium stuff yeah. to dump in here with a packet of high sodium gravy with a packet of you know a bottle mm. bottle of sour cream or something. Um, we can be healthier, and that's it's hard because there's so many. They're called dump recipes. It's just dump right. a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. turn it on and go. Uh, it's convenient, but it's not necessarily the healthiest for us. Um, so I try to avoid a lot of sites that rely heavily on dump and go recipes uh, and go for the ones that have more whole ingredients. And the ones I have found so far are Jeffrey Eisner, um, the 365 Days of Cooking, and um, Amy and Jackie. They're the three that I like the best. Um, and I'm looking at the clock and I want to make sure. So, so far, any questions? Have you used it as a slow cooker? I have not. But I will tell you that what I've read from many, many sources is that it takes way longer than a slow cooker would normally take. Mm -hmm. That you have to add a lot of time onto it and that people don't recommend it for its slow cooker function. Now that, that could be totally push posh. I don't know, because um, I've never tried it. I can't speak to anything on my personal experience, mm -hmm. but from what I've read, um, people do say that it takes a whole lot longer than their slow cooker. 
and they wouldn't give their slow cooker up in, in favor of this for right. slow cooking capacity. Um, more people are very ready to give up their stovetop pressure cookers for one of these yeah. because of mm -hmm. the built-in safety factors. And you can walk away while it's cooking, um, which is a huge bonus for people who are, because we do, we multitask. Everything we do now is multitasking. You know, if we're washing dishes, we're making sure that we're planning something, or you know, we're folding clothes, we're doing something else. We don't ever do just one thing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so if we're going to be cooking, we're always going to be trying to pile something else onto our plate. With this, you don't have to babysit it. Unless you glance at when it says burn, then you know you've screwed up. <laughs> so it does do that every once in a while. Okay. Um, so you have a glossary of terms in here. Um, a lot of it is some of the things that we talked about for parts and pieces. Um, we have uh, a quick reference guide. Again, this is Instant Pot specific, but just to let you know um, how this particular thing works. Um, when the LED says certain things, um, what that means, where the display, the timer and stuff are. Um, if you're pasteurizing milk, if you're making yogurt, you will get um, a boil type of uh, reading on there or a yogurt type of reading on there because it knows what you've pressed. Um, I've never had the lid. Um, warning come up to tell me my lid was not on right. It just won't go on. Right. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, the cooking timetables. Again, I apologize that it didn't come out in pretty color. Um, Instant Pot doesn't make these available on their website anymore. We mm. used to be able to download directly and have very good quality, right. and they shut that off. They don't allow that to happen anymore. So if you want it, you have to call them up and pay for it or something. Mm. Uh, but you can cook grains in here. Um, again, fresh vegetables, frozen vegetables, meats, beans. The baked beans recipe I gave you mm. is terrific. It's a terrific baked bean recipe, and no soaking. I mean. Mm -hmm. You soak them overnight, and you can have baked beans on the table in about 45 minutes. Wow. We're happy. We're happy about that, and they taste terrific. I did a class a year ago in May. It was a did a whole barbecue for the Memorial Day weekend class, and we made a potato salad, a pasta salad, um, the barbecue baked beans. We made an apple crisp, all in the electric pressure oh, cooker. Wow. Um, you know all the types of things you would associate with you know, barbecue, barbecue foods, mm -hmm. types of things. Um, you can also use this. I've been seeing lots and lots and lots of recipes now for proofing bread. Um, you can get your bread dough going and put it in here um, on a particular low setting and it'll proof your bread dough for you in lickety split time. Uh, and then you just transfer it to a baking sheet and, and bake it off. So that's great. Amy and Jackie actually just came up with, I think it's like bread number 12 or something. <laughs> it's another one of their like, okay, we've, we think we got it. <laughs> we, we perfected it. They do have a, a bread recipe that is relies heavily on the electric pressure cooker to um, get it proofed and get it ready for the oven. Um, and then you have your uh, New York cheesecake number 17 and the electric pressure cooker baked beans recipes that are here. And I'm going to quickly wash my hands. And like I said, I do have... Um, I have three different size um, springform pans. They are small because they have to fit inside here. So they're like a six inch diameter and a eight inch diameter and a seven inch diameter. But they make the cutest little cheesecakes. Oh, yeah. So I did make cheesecake for you tonight. I'll and take the big one over here. <laughs> we'll take the big one over here. Ah, I need a little bit Oh, those are nice. And you made those this afternoon. Yeah. I made these last night before I went to bed. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure they were nice and chilled for you today. And I will tell you that I made a boo-boo. Of course, I didn't realize it until I tried to do three at once. So like three batches of crust, three batches of cream cheese, three, you know, I tried, you know, the beautiful thing is it didn't bother the oven at all because it was all in each of these pots. So it's like press the buttons and go. But um, in my desire to get things all synchronized and choreographed, I forgot to put parchment paper in any of them. Mm. And you can see it was no problem. <laughs> so if you forget to line, as the recipe says, the instructions say to line each pan with parchment paper, it's obviously not going to be a problem for you. So 
So those are special pans? That These are spring form pans oh, okay. um, that the sides will pull away, oh. but they're smaller. So about 30, how many years have I been married? A lot. Um, when we were first married, my husband bought me a little, I said, I want a spring form pan. I want a spring form pan. So we went out and got me a spring form pan. I was like, no, I want a spring form pan. Like, I want to make cakes. And he got me a little spring form pan. All these years later, I'm now you've been using it. <laughs> it took 34 years that I'm using my little spring form pan. That's this one. <laughs> That's that one. So, um, yeah. So, who wants cheesecake? Is there anyone who doesn't want cheesecake? Oh, yeah. Small piece. Small piece. Yeah, very, very small piece. Well, small is a relative term. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's a lot you can do with electric pressure cookers. Now the question that I do want to address is whether or not these can be used for canning. And the very short and definitive answer is no. They cannot be used for canning. And that is because um, some of them are marketed as safe for canning and they have had their hands slapped by the USDA for that and by the um, consumer groups that work with food safety. What happens is when these come up to pressure, they, they vacillate, they go back and forth. So they're trying to hold the amount of pressure at the temperature they need. And that's not always constant. So it's going up a little, down a little, up a little, down a little, up a little, down a little to maintain an even heat and cooking in here. When you're canning, you can't have the temperature drop below a safe level of pressure. It has to stay at pressure or higher. Anything below could yield an under-processed food. Mm -hmm. So they are not recommended for canning. I've been to several conferences um, where the, the ball canning people actually had come out and said, yeah, you can can in those, and they got nailed, and mm -hmm. they had to put out, they had to retract their statements, and they had to put out all kinds of press, you know, campaign stuff to retract what they said because it could be very dangerous. So do not can in these things. Please do not can in them. Um, use them for all kinds of fun stuff, but don't can in them. That's that's for sure. So what's the verdict? Wonderful. Excellent. Not bad for Excellent. an electric pressure cooker. And that was 28 minutes. 28 minutes and then chill time until mm. it was set up. But really, 28 minutes. And the top didn't crack? Um, no. Yeah. The, first one, the first one did have a little crack in the top. And the, the third one I made, um, the recipe, is, and I think I cut it out of the recipe typing part because it was just stuff. So don't overbeat and you'll end up with an over puffy muffin top that's not oh, even. Cute. So all the other ones were nice and smooth, wow. and this one was the overbeaten mm. puffy muffin top. <laughs> so there we go. There we go. The best ribs I've ever had. I made in the electric wow. instant pot. And that's the whole, the whole the rib. rib. And you spiral them. You stand oh. them up on their sides and you spiral them yes. around and mm -hmm. until you can't fit any more in there. Mm -hmm. And you use your rack so they're not directly on the bottom. And you put your liquid and your flavorings and stuff and those were the best mm -hmm. ribs ever. I fit, you, it finished them off about five minutes under the broiler. You know, you brush on your yes, last yeah. minute sauce. sauce. Just tuck them under the broiler for five minutes just to caramelize that top a little bit. They were the bomb. Mm. They were the bomb. Wow. So if you are going to cook frozen chicken breasts in here and you wanted to cook four of them, mm -hmm. and they, of course, you don't have room to put them all single layer, crisscross them. Mm. Okay? Oh. Don't just stack them all flat, one on top of the other. Crisscross them so that you've got circulation all around them. So... Crisscross, 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 crisscross. <coughs> um, that works for that. And if you do have a recipe that you're making and it calls where you put stuff all, like you've got your ground beef, you've got potatoes, you've got carrots, you've got um, tomato paste, you've got onions, you've got all kinds of stuff in there, it's recommended, um, especially with your tomato products going in, put those at the top and don't stir. Mm -hmm. Just stack it. 
and that'll make sure that that sugary tomato product doesn't hit the bottom of the pot, mm -hmm. which would be more likely to scorch on. Mm -hmm. So don't stir it. When it starts boiling, it's gonna, start, it's gonna mix itself, right, yeah. right, and yeah. that steam in there is gonna help things move around a lot, and it'll self-mix, so you don't have to mix it before you go. So you could make a Chinese pot in there? Yep. You could make what? Chinese, Chinese pot. pot. Oh. That's just weird to me. Yep, um, that's kind of like a pot in pot. Yeah. which is what the um, cheesecake was. So I had a pot inside the pot that was cooking. It was on here. You would have, um, but you could use the same type of a springform pan that I had. I don't have small cooking pans. Um, everything I have at home is a much bigger diameter than what will fit nicely in here. So I've used the springform pan and I've made my Chinese pie and lasagna. Lasagna in here is great. Um, and made it all in here and put it in, wrapped it in foil so I didn't have any moisture from the steam getting in on the top. I did not, the recipe does not tell you to, to cover your cheesecake. When that comes out of the um, cooker and it's all hot, it's gonna have moisture on the top, you just dab that up with a paper towel and then chill it. So this wow. was not covered <laughs> in that cooker at all. But I didn't want my cheese and everything in my lasagna to get that, so I covered the whole thing with aluminum foil, put the whole thing down in. That's where um, the handles, of these things come in really well. If you have a trivet that doesn't have handles, um, take a long sheet of aluminum foil, fold it over a few times till it's about this wide, drape the whole thing down in, put your pot on top, and then fold those handles over. And then when you need to take that out, just unfold the handles and lift the whole thing out like a sling. That works very well. I've had to do that before because um, someone didn't think and cooked with the handles down. <laughs> oh, yeah, how am I supposed to get that out? Because it's a tight fit. You can't get your fingers down yeah. to lift it out. Um, so it's like, next time. Next time. You only, so, yeah. you only you learn, from you learn from your mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. Yeah, these handles fold up for a reason. <laughs> Gosh. So, yeah. Any other questions? Did you learn anything tonight no, that you didn't no, already no, know? Yeah, that yeah. was my goal. Definitely. I'm going to hand out a little evaluation here. I did give everyone my card. If you have any questions about using electric pressure cookers, um, canning, if you have any questions about uh, nutrition, gardening, um, anything that we can help you with here at the extension. Um, <laughs> So we're cleaning, we're cleaning, we've got all of our parts in the dishwasher, but we're trying to clean up here, and there's this solid part of our pot that we can't get to. You ever have those little oh, foam yeah. sponges? Oh, no. They go right, <laughs> they go right, you, thank you. they go right <laughs> in around there, and they clean slowly. Oh, slowly. <laughs> cooks by clean. Yep. There you go. See, I've made your day. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 <laughs> I have a case for Christy. And the other, other little thing I will mention, um, like if you stuck your nose inside this pot right now, mm -hmm. It was brand new last night. I took it out of the box, washed it all up, and I used it for the first time. Um, and I don't know which pot liner is in here now. I stuck my nose in here a little while ago before you all got here. It smells like cheesecake. Nice. So, um, your, your silicone ring will take on the odors of whatever you have cooked in there last. Um, the very first dish I cooked in here to try was a potato curry. Oh. And it smelled like oh, curry, curry for months. <laughs> um, I tried everything to the smell out. What I finally did was I ordered extra rings. Oh, and okay. it's recommended, um, and I think it's a great idea, to designate a color. So if I make sweets, this will be, every time I make a cheesecake or a dessert, I'm going to use the blue ring. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if it smells like curry, but I don't want my cheesecake to smell like curry. <laughs> um, and then I'll use my red for savory. And when you're storing, if you use your electric pressure cooker um, frequently um, or infrequently, storing, it's recommended to store this way so that you don't put weight on your silicone ring and replace your silicone ring every couple of years. Um, you don't have to. Does your ring go in the dishwasher? Yep, the ring can go in the dishwasher. 
they don't have to replace the ring. They just want it to not lose its shape, mm. its last elasticity. So just rub a little bit of cooking oil on it okay. to help keep that supple, just like you would your pressure cooker yeah. um, ring mm -hmm. that you take out of there in your rubber gasket. A little bit of cooking oil on there will help keep that supple. And then you don't have to, I mean, sometimes they say, oh, must replace every two years. Well, they want to sell some, so of course I'm going to tell you to replace them every two years. Okay. So now you're done. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much.